It's 2018, our everyday lives are consumed by data this and data that. But have you ever wondered how certain websites are able to store our data? Well, one of the most common ways information is stored on the internet is through something called a database. And so for example, whenever we visit websites such as Twitter or Instagram, we're constantly scrolling through things such as users, tweets, photos, likes, and comments. I think you get the picture. Now, all the data is usually tied together through some kind of relationship. For example, a tweet belongs to a particular user, a photo also belongs to a user, and so on and so forth. So it only makes sense to store our data in a system that can easily represent these connections. And hence, this is why a lot of websites use something called a relational database to collect data, you know, for better or worse. Now, one very popular relational database deployed in production environments is called MySQL and it's deployed everywhere around the globe. Now, whether or not this is the correct solution for you is a discussion left for another day. In today's video, we're going to explore how to install and operate MySQL. There are many different ways of doing this, but I'll show you some easy tools that'll help you get started. Uh, the goal we'll try to achieve is to learn how to create some tables and manage some data through CRUD operations. And CRUD stands for Create, Read, Update, and Delete, and we'll execute these operations through something called SQL. And don't worry, it's all pretty simple and straightforward once you see it in action. So why don't we go ahead and get started right now. Hey, hey, what is going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you are having a fantastic day. Now in today's video, we are going to start learning about some of the basics to MySQL. And by the end of today's video, hopefully we'll start to understand how to use something called SQL syntax to perform some very common operations on a MySQL database. All right, so with that being said, I would like to show you a very simple application that I've set up over here to kind of demonstrate to you why we would like to use a database instead of a web application in the first place. So basically over here, I have listed out a couple of users. So I have Brian Vu and I have Kevin Durant. And these are the two users that I have inside of my database over here. And one common operation to perform is to create a new user, right? So let's say I create, you know, Stephen Curry, it doesn't matter the names, but let's hit the create button over here and you'll see Steph Curry over here. If I refresh the page, you'll see that I'm able to read the information from my database to kind of populate this table over here. Now on the left side is my database browser. If I hit command R to refresh, I'll see Steph Curry over here. If I create a third or a fourth user, let's call him Clay Thompson. Hit the create button right there and refresh on the left side. You'll see that the web application is pretty much reflecting the information that we have inside of the database. And uh, you know, that's kind of what a web application does. It's able to read information from the database. It's able to insert new rows inside of my tables. And it's also able to delete some users if I wanted to kind of hit that button on the right side. And if I refresh my database, you'll notice that all those users are gone. All right, so hopefully you get the idea as to why we wanna use a database inside of our web applications. And now let's move on to how exactly I set up all this stuff in the first place by installing MySQL. So let me show you how to do that. And there's a couple of ways of installing MySQL and the typical way is to go through the MySQL website over here. And it's not that this is a bad idea, but I noticed that it's a little difficult to connect to your MySQL instance if you go through this process. So the way I would recommend that you install MySQL instead is to go through something called Homebrew. Now, if you're not familiar with this tool, it's basically a package manager that allows you to install software very easily onto your Mac. So the way you work this is to first install Homebrew by copying that and head on over to Terminal and just paste that into your terminal over here. Now it's going to install brew and all this other stuff onto your computer. Once you hit return like that and punch in your password and uh, you should be good to go over here. You just gotta wait a little bit as it installs and bam, there you go, installation successful. Okay, so what can you do with homebrew? Well, you can use the brew tool right here to install MySQL and it's very easy. 
uh, once you run this right here, it'll go through the proper steps to install MySQL. And because I already have it installed over here, it doesn't go through that entire process uh, right now. All right, so once you go through that and everything is done correctly, you should have MySQL up and running so that you can connect to it. All right, so hopefully all that is working for you. And the next thing you want to do is to install this tool called SQL Pro. So hit the download, install it onto your computer, and launch this piece of software. And you should be able to access this SQL Pro editor. Now, you're not going to see this window uh, when you open up SQL Pro, and you'll probably see this guy instead. So it's going to tell you to fill out some information as to the server you want to connect to. So why don't I create a brand new one over here, and you'll see this new favor on the left side. And you can give this whatever name you want to, so let's say LBTA MySQL Basics like that and for the host you want to hit 127.0.0.1 and this is basically code for kind of your computer it also refers to localhost and uh, for the username you want to use the username of root rot and just leave the password database and port to blank like that and hit the test connection button over here and so you'll see that connection succeeded which means that you can connect right over here with that button. But if you want to save these changes, you can hit that and you'll get this favor right here. You don't have to enter this information the next time you want to connect. So let's double click on that. And right off the bat, it's going to connect to your MySQL instance, which is over here. And you can see that I don't have any tables because I haven't chosen a database yet. Now down at the bottom over here, I have some databases that I've already created. And what you want to do is to probably add in a database to your MySQL instance. And you can call this whatever you want. So maybe call it LBTA uh, MySQL. You know, just leave it as that. Doesn't matter so much, but you just want to use these defaults as well. And then hit the Add button on the right side. Okay. So right now I am inside of this LBTA MySQL database. And the first thing you want to do is to create a table that you can store information in, kind of like what we're doing over here, right? So the example I'm going to use here is to create a users table. And there's a button all the way on the bottom right, or bottom left rather, that allows you to create a table. So the table is going to be called users. And I believe it's common convention to call it with a plural S over here. And you want to make sure you use a snake case if you have two words, right? So let's just call this users and leave these defaults as well. Hit the add button. And on the left side, you'll get your very first table over here that you can start playing around with. Now on the right side over here is the structure of your table. And you have this column called ID. It's an int. It's very special. It's actually an auto increment primary key, which I'll tell you what it is a little bit later on. But you can click on the content page or this tab, and it'll show you what exactly is inside of your table. But obviously, because you just created, there's nothing in there. And the first thing I would like to do is to create a second column by hitting that button on the bottom left over there. And the uh, column that I would like to create is this first name column over here. So let's just use first underscore name like that. For the type, you can select whatever you want inside of this little drop down. And I already have something that I want to create in mind. So I'll say var char of length 30. And then for over here, you can uncheck the allow null, which means that whenever you create a user with a first name, they have to have a first name, otherwise the database will not create your user. All right, so varchar is just a simple text type or a string type that can be of length 30, so 30 characters, I believe. And so let's create the third column over here called the last name. Does it that, say last name, and let's say varchar. And you can create 20 or whatever you want for the length of your string. And also uh, uncheck the allow null and just click right there and you should be good to go here. Now, if you click on the content page now, you'll see that we have the additional columns in here. 
And if you want to create a user in your system, you can do it a couple of ways, but one very simple way is to hit this plus button down at the bottom left, and you'll see that the ID says null right off the bat here. And you don't really want to manually create your ID because it's a primary key and it actually auto increments, but we'll talk about that later. You just want to leave that as null. So I just hit the tab and for the first name, I'll say Brian and Voom, and I'll hit either enter or tab again, and it'll create this row inside of my users table. All right, so you can create as many rows as you want. So let's say Steph Curry, hit enter. You'll get the ID of two for Steph Curry. So again, the ID is special. It allows us to uniquely identify a user inside of our system. And so moving on now, we would like to take a look at how exactly we create some of this information using something called SQL syntax instead. And so what's great about SQL Pro is that you can execute a lot of this uh, code very easily through the UI. So on this right tab over here called Query, you can start typing some things like uh, SQL syntax. So I'm going to show you how to select some information from the database. So I'm going to say select star uh, from, see, from users. And you probably can't see this very well, so I'm going to bump up the font to maybe that size. And with SQL Pro, you can highlight the SQL syntax and hit run selection. And if you select star from users, you're pretty much selecting all columns from users. That's what the star means. And that returns you all of your columns. If you change this to ID, you can highlight this again, hit the run, you'll see the ID like that. All right, so let's just leave this as star to make it easier to read. And another thing that you do with SQL Pro is just hit Command R on the highlighted SQL syntax, and it'll just run that SQL query. All right, so this is called a query. And now what we would like to learn about here is how we can actually insert a new user inside of this table with some SQL syntax, right? So in other words, we want to say, you know, Steph Curry over here, hit the create. We want to execute that create using some SQL syntax. So let's see, let's run this again. All the users that I have in here is just me and Steph Curry. So let's try to create Kevin Durant right now. Okay, so the syntax for the insertion looks like this. So insert into the table name, so users, and you specify the columns like this. So first name, so first name, and last name. And then you just say values. And for the values, we want to say the string of Kevin. And then we'll say for the last name of Durant. Now I'm going to highlight that, hit Command R or hit the run selection over there. And then select all of my users again, run that. And you'll see we have the third user of Kevin Durant like so. Now the way that I'm typing out some of the SQL syntax, I'm using uppercase for the keywords, but uh, SQL isn't case sensitive, but typing out your SQL queries this way, it just makes it easier to read. All right, so that's pretty much how you would uh, enter a new user inside of your users table. And the next thing we want to take a look at is how we can perform a delete using one of these SQL queries. So let's see how a delete query looks like right now by saying delete. And uh, you just want to say delete from users. But the thing that you have to watch out for is if you run this query right here, you're going to delete all of the information from your users table. And obviously you don't want to do that. So what you can do is to enter some criteria for what you want to delete. And let's say I want to delete Kevin Durant, right? Well, I know that Kevin Durant has an ID of three. So you can say where and ID equals three. So I'm going to run this and select all of my users again. And you'll see Kevin Durant just disappeared, right? So let's say I enter someone like Clay and uh, Thompson like that. Run this over here. Run these select one more time and you'll see Clay Thompson and he has an ID of four. Now the reason why it's not three is because SQL knows the last ID it created. So it's just going to auto increment from that. And that's why we get the value of four instead of three. Okay, so good stuff there. And one thing that you can do with your selection query is to also apply a filter very similar to this over here. 
So you can say where, you know, first name is equal to, let's see, Brian. And we'll run this and you'll see that I will appear and not the other two users in the system. So if you run just that, you get all of your users and this is the filtering mechanism right over here. So if you had other users with the name of Brian, it'll show up inside of your query. So let's say we create Brian Thompson over here, create that, run this query, you'll see those two users inside of your uh, rows and inside of your results. All right, so up to this point so far, we've been able to create some users inside of our system. We also learned how to delete and also read from our users table, right? So one last query that you probably want to learn about is how to update information inside of your users table. So let me select from all users again. And let's say I want to update Steph Curry over here with the ID of two. And instead of using Steph Curry, his full name is actually Stephen Curry. So let's see how we can do this through some SQL syntax. But one other way that you can actually update your tables is to just hit the filter over here. You'll see all of your users. So you can just enter information over here, Stephen Curry like that. And that'll make the change instantly. So you can change it back to just Steph Curry like so. Go back to the query tab, select from your users, so Steph Curry. And let's try to update users and set, let's see, capital S-E-T. And we'll say first name equals, uh, let's see, Stephen. And for here, if you run this query, you'll, you'll update all of your users inside of your system. So you obviously don't want to do that. And so we'll say where ID equals to two, and we'll just run this right off the bat there. So down at the bottom, you see that we have no errors and we have one row affected. And if you run your selection again, you'll see that Stephen Curry was updated with this new first name. Okay. So that's how we operate all of the four CRUD operations inside of MySQL. And the last thing I want to talk to you about in today's video is how we can actually create this user table using some SQL syntax. So let me, instead of creating the users table, you probably want to create a different table, right? So let's say inside of your system, your users can leave messages behind. You can just say create table of, let's see, messages. And inside of here, I believe you have to create at least one column, so ID, and we'll just say ID int, so maybe int and primary key, which again is something very special that we'll talk about probably in a later video. You can run this query right here, so command R, and you'll see messages is created inside of your tables list. And looking at the contents of your table, you'll see that you have the ID column and the structure looks like this as well. Kind of very similar to what users was in the very beginning. Now, if you wanted to look at the syntax for how this table was created, you can right click on this and show the create table syntax. So let me just copy this, hit the close and paste down here. So, Let's kind of analyze what exactly this syntax is doing. So creating users, and I believe this just helps you specify the table a little bit cleaner with these tick marks. And so the ID is an integer, which uh, 11, I guess, bytes allocated to it. And it's unsigned, which means that it's always going to be positive. It's not null and it auto increments. And down at the bottom is where we specify that it's a primary key. You can do it this way, you can do it this way as well. And so we create first name and last name, which are both var char 30, I guess it's 20 down here, is not null and the default value is going to be an empty string like this. Uh, the auto increment allows you to kind of tell by how many uh, numbers or integers that your ID uh, increments by and NODB is the specific database type that we're using and the character set is UTF-8, which is pretty much a standard. All right, everyone, that's going to wrap it up for today's video on how to get started with some of the basics of MySQL. In the next couple of lessons, I do plan on showing you how to use Node.js and MySQL together to provide a complete backend solution. So make sure to subscribe to the channel for more videos on that. 
And hopefully you enjoyed today's video and got something out of it. Make sure to leave a thumbs up and I'll see you in the very next video. Bye bye guys.